I'm playing against a young talented boy who's recently gained 200 ELO points. He's clearly underrated and he opens the game with English. Bishop to g7, bishop g2, knight c6. It's a symmetrical variation and he goes for the Botwinic setup. I love to play this with both colors and my opponent has played my favorite opening. And here my knight comes out to f6 and I castle because here is a very interesting idea which black has. Generally he can play knight e8 to c7 to e6 to d4 because the d4 square has been weakened. So I go on this idea with knight e8 and he goes rook b1. His plan is to start pushing with a3 and b4. And that's the reason why I play rook b8. The idea some point is that when your opponent plays b5, b4, you can take, take and meet it with b5. So the rook moving away from this diagonal is generally a good idea. Knight to c7, developing my knight. If now he goes b4 in this position, I can take, pawn takes and play b5. And black is doing pretty well here. So that's the reason why my opponent now thinks and plays his knight to d5. Although this does not look like a great move because now I can just play b5 and black is doing really well here. Instead, I play knight to e6. I'm looking for the d4 square here, trying to use it because it has been weakened. You notice how both the pawns have been moved ahead. So the d4 square is weak. Bishop e3 played by my opponent and now one of my knights goes and sits on d4. At this point I am quite comfortable with my position. I have 3 minutes 51 seconds on the clock. Also quite a decent position. He takes, knight takes knight. And now I have a choice between taking it with the pawn or with the knight. I don't want to be taking with the bishop just yet. Uh, so, knight takes and pawn takes are two options. I decide to keep that square in my control and took it with the knight. And I was expecting him to go b4 here. But, thinking hard here. My opponent actually... This is a very pesky knight because I can always kick away his knight from d5 but he cannot kick me away. But at the same time you don't want to be giving up your bishop. My god he gives up his important dark squared bishop and this cannot be a good idea. Uh, I can take with the pawn here but if I take with the bishop my bishop is well centralized and sitting on a good square. So already black has a very solid edge in the position. And this opening has been a big success for black. Now to slowly start piling up e6 first, pushing the knight away. Knight goes back to e3. And now b5 would have been a good plan. Also bishop d7, preparing b5 was nice. But I played a6. It was also okay. He played b4. And now playing directly b5 could have kept the chances of opening up the position in a big way but I took he took back and now put my pawn on b5 so thematic play here he went rook f to c1 As you can see he's playing very solidly not making any errors bishop was put on b7 The only thing that I'm counting on here as an advantage is my bishop pair. But my opponent now pushes my bishop away. So the bishop comes back to g7 and now he's trying to attack the pawn on b5. Make it into a weakness and attack it. Black's move looks pretty straightforward. Just queen d7 defending it. And so I played my queen to d7. It's not so easy for both sides to make progress. It's a game of patience. And my opponent is doing it very well with rook c2. He wants to double down the c file. 
and take it at the right time so that he can enter rook c7. Now, patient move like rook fc8 would have been pretty good. Uh, but I'm kind of trying to make use of my bishop pair here. And as they say, you should open up the position when you have the bishop pair. My next move is kind of not the best. I go f5. It looks kind of thematic. But at the same time, I have a lot of weaknesses now created in my camp. And my opponent has a very straightforward idea of doubling down the c-file and opening up the c-file. So rook c1 played. And now I realize that he wants to take here and enter to c7. So I played my rook to c8. 2 minutes 18 seconds for my opponent, 1 minute 50 seconds for myself. It's a close game right now. The position is around equal, maybe very small edge to white. But with just 2 minutes left for both of us, mistakes are bound to happen. He takes on b5 and now I should first take on c2. This is an error. Taking back is an error because now he can take. He first takes e takes f5. Once again, I have an option between taking on c2, taking on g2, taking back on f5. Too many captures to calculate. And I decide to take on g2. Bishop takes g2. Okay, if he makes an intermediate move, fe6, I can move my queen away uh, at least to b7. Because here... Yeah, rook c2 first and then queen b7 would be winning. So he played king g2 and now a blunder by me. I take with this pawn. I should have taken with the g pawn and it's around equal. But e takes f5 is a mistake because rook c8, rook c8, rook c8, queen c8, queen a2 and king queen d5 is winning for him. But he goes king g1 and this allows me to get back into the game. Now, a good idea was to take on c2 once and push f4. But this is where I start getting ambitious. Like, let's try to attack. The knight is out of the game. We can even give up the b5 pawn if needed. So, rook e8 played. You can see how I made that move. I really want to attack. Rook c7, queen e6. My point is, take the pawn on b5. I will push on with f4. And so, he takes and I push f4. And this is where my opponent had a tactic. Rook g7, king g7, knight c7. And he is clearly better here. But instead... He blunders with rook c6. Now, if queen h3 is played, black is better because I have all sorts of threat. f3 and all in the air. But instead, I take on g3. He takes back and bishop e5. I missed the fork. This fork was absolutely not seen by me. And unfortunate part is that I don't have any sacrifices as well in the position. You can see that both of us had a minute on the clock. But with this move, I am surprised. And I do not know how to react because I'm going to lose an exchange now. And it's one of those cases where you have just gone all out into the attack, forgotten about some tactics. He takes the rook. I'm thinking if I can take bishop takes g3, fg3, queen g3, but his queen comes in between. So I take back the knight. And now there are many, many ways for him to win this position. Um, he goes first rook c7, which is a good move. I bring my rook to f8, check here, good move by him once again. And now just block the f file with rook f7 with the other rook coming in. This would be curtains for me. But instead, my opponent now with only 38 seconds also gets nervous. He plays his queen to e2. That is a terrible mistake because now I sense the opportunity. Bishop d4, look at this. Rook takes f2 in the air, queen takes g3 in the air, bishop takes f2 and he has no checks. This game is over. Actually, black has is winning it seems there's a defense though with queen f queen f1 or rook c2 but my opponent is now flipping out he has just 18 seconds he's placed g3 now rook takes f2 is winning because if queen f2 there is queen g3 but instead i give a check here king h1 and now give a check again to h4 and then take on f2 but instead i take on f2 and it's a checkmate it's a back rank mate i simply miss it i did not see it and my opponent has won the game with applause there, a handshake, well played young man, back rank mate happens to just about anyone guys, you have to be alert and 
a win for my opponent there well very exciting game here's a small tactical pattern that i want to reiterate in this game as black here's a move that i should have played rook takes f2 and this is a beautiful concept because if he takes with the queen then i have queen g3 check and i will win the queen and if he plays queen e8 check this time giving a mate then i can withdraw my rook giving a discovered check with my bishop and then picking up his queen so my mistake was that i gave a check and then took on f2 and after queen e8 there is no discovered check on the king and it's losing uh, white wins there is a very famous game of fisher over here so this is the position let me flip the board this is fisher versus sherwin from new york and white to move what do you play here so the move that fisher played in this game was the beautiful strike rook takes f7 so fisher's point is clear that after take there is rook 8 mate and here sherwin went in with rook c1 check thought that fisher would play rook to f1 and then he could give a check here like there's a check and he could simply move his king and this game is completely winning for black because now uh, the rook is under attack if you take i take with the queen and it will be a mate so that is game over but fisher surprised his opponent with a beautiful move here can you find it white to play it's actually not so difficult is the only other move but that the concept is the same you go queen f1 now and if you were to take this time rook f1 i take rook f1 king h8 and this time it's a checkmate over there so in the game h5 was played and after queen c1 uh, he couldn't take queen c1 now because of rook f1 discovered check and i win the queen uh, queen h4 threatening a mate on h2 but after takes and h3 uh here sherwin resigned and fisher won the game so this is a tactical pattern worth remembering